welcome back to our channel where we delve into the profound stories of the Bible. Today, we're diving into a gripping tale that captivates our attention, the tragic story of Judas Iscariot. His betrayal had far-reaching consequences, leading to Jesus' arrest, trial, and ultimately, his crucifixion. In the scriptures, it's intriguing to note that Jesus knew from the beginning that Judas would betray him, yet he still chose him to be one of his disciples. So why did Jesus choose Judas? Join us as we explore Judas's choices, the heart-wrenching chain of events that followed, and the devastating end that awaited him. Stay tuned as we uncover the valuable lessons we can learn from this cautionary tale and how it can shape our lives today. But before we embark on this journey, let us remember that even in the face of darkness, there is always hope. Have you ever experienced the weight of guilt and wondered if redemption is possible? What profound insights can we gain from Judas's story? Let's find out together. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss a single episode as we navigate the captivating narratives of the Bible. Are you ready? Let's get started. To understand Judas Iscariot's story, we must begin at the beginning. Little is known about Judas's early life, but we do know that he was born in the small town of Kerioth, hence his surname Iscariot. Let's set the stage and travel back in time to the first century. Judas grew up in a tumultuous period under Roman rule. The Israelites longed for a Messiah who would deliver them from oppression. It was during this time that Jesus Christ entered the scene. The Bible does not provide extensive details about Judas's upbringing or family background. However, we can infer that he was likely raised in a Jewish household, adhering to the religious customs and traditions of the time. Growing up, Judas, like many others, eagerly awaited the arrival of the long-awaited Messiah. In Isaiah 9.6, the prophet Isaiah foretells the coming of the Messiah, saying, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This prophecy resonated with the people of Israel, including Judas. Although we don't have explicit details about Judas's encounter with Jesus or the circumstances that led to his discipleship, it is evident that Jesus saw something in Judas, choosing him to be one of the twelve. In Mark 3, 13, 14, we find Jesus appointing the twelve disciples, stating, He appointed twelve that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. Judas was part of this select group, sharing in the privilege and responsibility of spreading the message of the kingdom. Jesus, in his infinite wisdom, handpicked twelve men to be his closest disciples. Among them was Judas Iscariot. But why did Jesus choose him? In John 6, 70, 71, Jesus said, Did I not choose you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. Jesus knew from the beginning that Judas would betray him, but he still chose him. We find ourselves pondering this decision, seeking wisdom from the scriptures. The Bible does not explicitly reveal the specific reasons why Jesus chose Judas to be one of his disciples. However, we can explore some possible insights to gain a deeper understanding. In Luke 6, 12, 13, we read, One of those days Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose twelve of them whom he also designated apostles. Jesus' selection of the twelve was a deliberate and purposeful act. It is important to note that Jesus' purpose extended beyond the immediate circumstances. He saw beyond the surface and understood the greater plan that would unfold. In Acts 1 16, 17 the Apostle Peter reflecting on the betrayal of Judas said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as a guide for those who arrested Jesus. This verse indicates that Judas's role was part of God's predetermined plan. The fulfillment of prophecy played a significant role in the selection of Judas. In Psalm 41, 9, David prophesied, Even my close friend, someone I trusted, one who shared my bread, has turned against me. Jesus, being the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies, knew that Judas would fulfill this role. Furthermore, Jesus' choice of Judas highlights his boundless love and grace. Jesus extended his invitation to follow him to everyone, including those who would later betray him. His desire was to offer redemption and forgiveness to all, giving Judas the opportunity to turn from his destructive path. 
It is important to remember that, although Judas's actions were ultimately tragic, Jesus chose him with a purpose in mind. Judas's betrayal served a greater plan of salvation, demonstrating the depth of God's love and the extent to which he would go to redeem humanity. As one of the twelve apostles, Judas played a crucial role in Jesus' ministry. He was the treasurer, responsible for managing the group's finances. However, the scriptures reveal a darker side to Judas's character. In Matthew 26, 14, 16, we learn of Judas's ill-fated decision to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. This act of betrayal has puzzled scholars and believers alike throughout the ages. Was it solely driven by greed or were there deeper motives at play? In John 12, 4, 6, we encounter an incident where Mary anoints Jesus' feet with expensive perfume and Judas objects saying, why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. John adds, he did not say this because he cared about the poor but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. This passage suggests that Judas had a propensity for greed and dishonesty. While he used the guise of concern for the poor, his true intentions were self-serving. This incident provides some insight into his character and the motives that may have influenced his ultimate betrayal. Another perspective is that Judas's betrayal was a result of disillusionment or misunderstanding. In Matthew 26, 47, 50, we witness Judas identifying Jesus to the religious leaders with a kiss. Jesus responds by saying, do what you came for, friend. The use of the term friend indicates that Jesus still extended love and forgiveness towards Judas, suggesting that perhaps Judas's actions stemmed from a misguided sense of loyalty or a misunderstanding of Jesus's mission. It is important to note that while these perspectives offer some understanding, the ultimate motive behind Judas's betrayal remains complex and multifaceted. In Luke 22, 3, 6 we read, Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. This passage suggests the involvement of Satan, indicating a spiritual battle at play. It is clear that Judas's betrayal was not a singular event driven solely by personal motives. It involved external influences and spiritual forces that worked in conjunction with his character flaws. In Luke 22:21, Jesus acknowledges the weight of Judas's betrayal, stating, But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. Jesus, in his infinite knowledge, recognized the impending betrayal and its significance. The betrayal of Judas serves as a reminder of the human capacity for deception, greed, and misguided intentions. It also highlights the depth of Jesus' sacrifice as he willingly chose to be betrayed by one of his own in order to fulfill the plan of salvation. The night of the Last Supper, the stage was set for the betrayer to act. Judas led the authorities to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, identifying him with a kiss. This event triggered a chain of events that would culminate in Jesus' crucifixion. In Matthew 27, 3, 5, we witness the aftermath of Judas' actions. Overwhelmed with guilt and remorse, he returned the blood money and confessed his sin. However, consumed by despair, he tragically took his own life. Judas' actions had far-reaching consequences, both for himself and for the ministry of Jesus. In Matthew 26, 24, Jesus himself acknowledged the gravity of Judas's betrayal, saying, The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. These words indicate the severe consequences awaiting Judas for his act of betrayal. Judas's betrayal led to Jesus' arrest, trial, and ultimately, his crucifixion. It was a pivotal event in the redemptive plan of God, but it came at a great cost. In Acts 1.18.19, we gain further insight into the tragic fate of Judas. The Apostle Peter, addressing the disciples, said, With the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong. His body burst open and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their language Akeldama, that is, field of blood. This passage reveals the gruesome end of Judas, highlighting the consequences of his actions. 
The story of Judas serves as a solemn reminder of the devastating effects of sin and the consequences of betraying trust. It is important to note that while Judas' actions were tragic, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross offers hope and redemption to all who believe. In Romans 6.23 it is written, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Even in the midst of betrayal and darkness, God's love and grace remain available to all who turn to him. The story of Judas Iscariot concludes with a heartbreaking end. The Gospel of Matthew tells us that after returning the money, Judas went and hanged himself. It is a somber reminder of the consequences of betrayal and the devastating power of guilt. In Matthew 27 3, 5, we read about the aftermath of Judas's actions. Overwhelmed by guilt and remorse, he returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. Recognizing the magnitude of his betrayal, Judas confessed, saying, I have sinned, for I have betrayed innocent blood. However, the weight of his actions proved too much to bear, and in his despair he took his own life. Judas's tragic end serves as a stark reminder of the destructive power of guilt and the deep anguish resulting from a conscience burdened by betrayal. Judas's death highlights the profound consequences of his actions and the depths of despair he experienced. It is a poignant reminder of the destructive nature of sin and the need for repentance and forgiveness. It is crucial to remember that while the story of Judas's tragic end is undoubtedly a solemn one, it should also serve as a call to seek redemption and reconciliation. In 1 John 1-9 it is written, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. God's mercy and forgiveness are available to all who genuinely repent and turn to him, no matter the depths of their transgressions. Judas's story stands as a cautionary tale, reminding us of the devastating consequences that can arise from betraying trust and yielding to sin. It urges us to examine our own hearts and actions, seeking to live lives of integrity, faithfulness and repentance. As we conclude our exploration of Judas Iscariot's tragic end, let us remember that even in the face of deep sorrow and remorse, there is always hope and the possibility of redemption through God's grace. Thank you for joining us on this captivating journey through the life of Judas Iscariot. Remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and leave your thoughts and comments down below. Until next time, may we all seek the path of righteousness and learn from the mistakes of the past.